On a 200-acre campus in Iowa, Winnebago runs the world's largest RV factory. Here, Winnebago uses an assembly line floor the size of eight football fields and its own sawmill to handcraft the motorhomes that have made it a household name for over 60 years. While Winnebago makes up to 70% of the products inside its RVs, the company outsources its powertrains and chassis. Once these parts reach their assembly lines, each RV's steel subfloor is lined up, lowered into place, and welded onto the chassis. It will serve as the foundation of the motorhome. Up front, the vehicle's steel cab is lowered on. It has a windshield attached with a non-hardening sealant, like you'd find on a car. This gives drivers extra protection that other RV builders who use fiberglass cabs and rubber gaskets for their windshields can't offer. In the metal stamping building, lasers cut sheet metal and tubing for the steel parts of the motorhome. Once certified metal workers have cut and pressed what they need, the pieces are placed on racks for the electro-coating process. Electro-coating involves bathing the parts before putting them in a tank that electronically charges their surface to attract paint film particles. They're then baked in an oven at 400 degrees for an hour. Electro-coating protects the parts against corrosion, extending their life for customers. This $7 million setup allows Winnebago to coat up to 15,000 parts daily. At another facility, aluminum parts for sidewall structures and screen doors are made using steel dies. These are cookie cutter like frames that aluminum cylinders heated to 950 degrees are shaped with. The dies are each uniquely crafted and Winnebago uses 130 different shapes. Just like its metals process, Winnebago has a separate building for making plastic components like shower stalls, dashboards, and bumpers. In a process called thermoforming, one inch thick plastic sheets are heated to a malleable temperature, then vacuum sealed over a mold. Once they cool and parts can be cut, the extra scraps are ground up and repurposed for playgrounds. More complex plastic parts, like water tanks and wheel wells, are made using rotocasting. Plastic beads similar to those in a bean bag are ground up and put in molds, then heated to a liquid state while the tool is turned in all directions. As the liquid cools, it coats the inner mold and forms a sealed shape. All wood products, like cabinets and doors, found in Winnebago RVs are made here, at the sawmill. Computer-controlled cutting machines cut pine wood to specific lengths and slice laminate for trim into various shapes. Parts like cabinets are then glued, stapled, and screwed together before being hooked on a conveyor belt that takes them directly into the assembly line facility. Winnebago makes all of its own furniture, from seats to mattresses. In the Stitchcraft building, the foam for cushions is put on Winnebago's suction machine causing it to shrink down to one-fourth its normal size. Cushion covers can easily be put on, then the air is let back in. This technology, along with real human stitchers, who undergo six months of training, allow Winnebago to build about 40 seats and 20 sofas daily. For soft goods like rubber steps and vinyl flooring, Winnebago has a water jet machine that cuts parts using nothing but pressurized water. Using 55,000 pounds of pressure, it requires only two to three gallons of water per day, compared to the average car wash, which requires nine to 15 per car. Finally, there's the motorhome itself. Like any home, it requires a durable roof and walls. Winnebago uses multi-layered walls with high-density foam and glossy fiberglass. These layers, along with the interior finish, are pressed together with pressurized rollers and a strong adhesive. For structural strength, a cutting machine creates room to sandwich metal framework within the walls. A computer-controlled router then cuts holes for windows and doors, and channels for electronic wiring. The fiberglass roof is a 60 millimeter thick, one-piece system that helps to eliminate potential leaks. Fiberglass is rot, fire, and rust resistant, and can last as long as 40 years. Back at the assembly line where the chassis has been prepped, everything comes together. Wire looms for electronics are installed 
and the RV's battery, generator, propane tank, and water tanks are put in place. A plywood floor is lowered, glued, and screwed into place on top of the steel subfloor. A sticky layer of vinyl flooring is then rolled on top. Wood furniture and appliances are lowered into the RV while the sidewalls are put up around it. As the roof is placed on top, it relies on Winnebago's interlocking joint system to attach it to the sidewall. Everywhere the roof meets the wall, two precise pieces of metal trim lock together like puzzle pieces to give the cab structure extra strength. Once all furniture and appliances are fixed in place, along with doors, windows, and a glossy paint job, final inspections are made. The vehicle even undergoes several stress tests, like being blasted with 250 spray heads that deliver the equivalent of 50 inches of rainfall per hour. If it survives this, it's ready to join the millions of Winnebago RVs already on the road today.